Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Yes, the Anvil Steam Condenser. Doing a review and what you need to know. And what are they not telling you? There is something huge no one's talking about. I mean, massive. It's my biggest concern, but no one's talking about it. So I'm gonna cover it today. Yeah, don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. If you have not hit that subscribe button, come on, just take a second. Thank you, it costs you nothing means a lot. I definitely appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. And I've got 17 things to tell you, and the majority of it will go with any steam condenser, but some of it will only apply to the Anvil steam condenser. If you're looking to buy one, or if you already have one, or you have one and haven't used it, watch this video. I promise I'm going to help keep you from hurting yourself and keep you from having boilovers. There are so many little tiny details that you just need to be aware of. That's it. Nothing massive, just little tiny details you need to be aware of. And they're going to make your day and your life a lot easier and hopefully a lot less painful. So let's jump right into this, okay? First of all, beautiful piece of equipment. Got some serious weight. It's nice, stainless. How do you put it on? Well, this is going to attach to several systems out there, but this one was designed for the anvil. You take your lid, get that, on the anvil it's got a little Phillips, you loosen it up, you take it off, you put it back together so you don't lose any pieces, and now you have your lid. Take your lid, and I'm gonna tell you to flip it upside down, and I'll show you why. When you go to assemble this thing, you take the big old nut off, It's easier to do it before you put it on, <laughs> on the system. You just don't put it on there. Don't apply the tri-clamp. You've got a O-ring in here, and that O-ring has to sit perfectly round. If you hold this on its side or upside down, it's very hard to get it in place. You hold it like this, it's easy. Or you hold it by itself and without all the rest of the stuff attached, it's even easier. You set that on top. This nut has a round lip and no round lip. You want that round lip facing under the side, under the lid so that it pushes up against it. And you don't need to get a monkey wrench out. You're just hand tightening it. There we go, nothing special. Doesn't have to be tweaked on there, okay? You have a little hole here for your recirculation. Yeah, there you go. And I say that because I leave this on during the mash and then as I get up to boil, that's when I go to take it off, get it ready and then put it on during the boil. So. That's for my research. If you don't have a research pump, not a big deal. Get a research pump. Yeah, get your efficiencies up there a little bit, you know, maximize your value of your grains. During the boil, that little hole, don't stop it up. It's gonna allow a little bit of steam out. It helps to with the back pressure because this is gonna create back pressure and you need to be aware of that. So I'm gonna jump right in. We have 17 items. First one. This is primarily designed, and I say primarily because there may be a reason out there for someone to say otherwise. It is primarily designed for people who brew indoors. Yes, indoors. I have seen one video and I have seen several photos of people brewing with this thing outside. In the comments, if you have a reason to use this outside, put it in the comments because I'm very confused. The only thing I can humanly imagine is that you do crawfish boils and your neighbors are like, ooh, I see some steam. You must be boiling some crawfish. Yeah. Why would you use this outside? I just don't, I don't comprehend. So let me know in the comments. Number two. Number two and number three are gonna kind of go hand in hand. Number two is boil off reduced or reduced boil off. This will reduce your total water necessary for the brew day as far as in your mash and boil. So you need to do number three, do a boil off test. Based on your altitude, that's going to impact it probably a lot. It depends upon if you're 100 feet above sea level, I'm at sea level, or if you're like 4,000 feet above sea level. So yeah, keep that in mind. What I would recommend, and don't do a gallon, just don't, it's not gonna give you the right numbers, put at least five gallons of water in there, crank it up to a boil, and then let it cool back down and measure your difference and do a 30 or 60, whatever you want, and you can multiply if you want 90. I would do 30 minutes and then multiply it. Then do one with the steam condenser and figure out how much different it was. So you say, okay, I only boiled off this much. Over here, I boiled a lot more. Here's my differences. This is what I would normally put in a batch, uh, 10 pound, whatever, grain bill. And over here, 
let's lower the numbers down. There we go. And now you'll have the correct numbers. So you don't end up with six gallons left over on a five gallon expected batch because you didn't realize your boil off was gonna be considerably lower. Yeah, let's keep that in mind. And that's based on the power setting you set it on too. So you gotta keep that in mind also. Which puts us in number four, less power needed for vigorous boil. So I guess you could say this would be nice if you really, really were you know, that OCD and you wanted a vigorous boil and you only had 110 volts. You can put this on outside or 120 volts, whatever you wanna call it. So, but 120. At 120, you're gonna get a very vigorous boil that you normally wouldn't get without the steam condenser. And you need to keep that in mind. Number five, <clears throat> the drain water can be hot. I have seen people out there telling me their drain water is 80 Fahrenheit, 90 Fahrenheit. 80 Fahrenheit is what my tap water is in Florida during the summer. So I'm telling you right now, mine's always gonna be over 80 degrees no matter what. Mine has been running between 110 and 120 Fahrenheit. So at 110 to 120 Fahrenheit, when I'm draining, I'm gonna be draining into a kettle or down a drain. I'm not gonna be draining it into some sort of soft plastic thing. Okay, so you gotta understand the temperature. And 110, 120 can be uncomfortable. Shouldn't do any major damage to you, but it's gonna be uncomfortable. I think my wife takes showers at like 122, which is crazy. But yeah, uh, different creature out there. Number six, the water coming off contains DMS. Do not put any of the boil off water back into your brew. Don't do it, trust me. You don't wanna do that. Just dump it out or use it to go water your plants or your grass or whatever else you wanna use it for. Take a shower, smell like beer if you really want to go there, but hey, don't drink it. Don't put it back in there. Okay. Number seven. Number seven is the one I learned very quickly. <laughs> you get the steam condenser out, have your gloves ready. You're going to touch that thing in any shape, size, or form, put at least one glove on. I will tell you this part does not get as hot as this part. When it's doing its mash and it's just sitting on top of it just because you have nowhere else to put it, you can usually still touch this. I'm not saying you can, I'm saying I can. As soon as it starts to boil, don't touch that. Don't touch it at all. Don't even think when it's cooling down and you're, you're just don't touch it. Use a glove. And why would you want to lift it up during a boil? Well, you might have additions. So you're going to have to lift it up. You're going to have to grab it, lift it. It's going to drip. It's going to be a little hot. You need to be aware of these things. So be careful. Be very careful. You can pick it up, set it on a pot, pick it back up, set it back, whatever you need to do, but get some good gloves. And I will leave links below. The Spider-Man gloves aren't available anymore, but there's other gloves out there that do the same job. They're very inexpensive and they will save your hands and fingers and your day from being in a lot of pain. So yeah. Number eight, don't forget about it. If you're taking this and you're draining it, down a drain or in a sink, you're boiling in your kitchen and you're lucky enough to have this right by your sink, which is great for the water and for the drain. I recommend brewing right next to your sink if you can. Yeah, you're set. If not, if you're pouring the, letting this drain, pour, whatever, drain into a kettle, don't forget about it. This will overflow. You're getting, I think it's something close to six gallons in an hour or something like that. But yeah, you're gonna need another kettle or pot to swap it out where well, you go dump this one, swap it back and just keep it going, okay? So yeah, don't forget about it. I've done it. Number nine, make sure this is open and you have cool water flowing through this before you put it on top during a boil. Make sure the cold water's flowing. I did it the very first time and I didn't realize that wasn't open. I had this going, thought I had it set open, yeah, you'll get a boil over. So yeah, as soon as you go to put this on and you have the cool water running, go ahead and lower your power. Lower it down to 50% if you want and then bring it up. But no matter what, bring it down to at least 75%, if not, like I said, down to 50. Some people do 50. I usually do between 60 and 75. It depends upon how much I got going on in there. Lately, I've been putting it down, I think around 70. But yeah, you can get a boil over even at 70. It, yeah, just be careful. Cold water flowing, power reduced, you can bring the power back up and give it a minute because every time you open it, you're letting all that heat out and that back pressure, you need to be careful. I know this isn't part of the 17, it's because I forgot. I have mentioned this in previous videos, including the unboxing, but yeah, this is the sprayer valve and the nozzle condenser or condenser nozzle cap that goes up here. 
One thing that I had a problem with right off the bat was that I had a leak between this and this, and it was a pretty decent little leak going. So plumber's tape. If I was metal on metal, I would use plumber's tape, but I'm plastic on metal. So, you know, your mileage may vary. Yours may seal up just fine. I had to put some plumber's tape on it. It didn't go down as far, but it sealed. Yeah, I did let Blickman know about that. But yeah, plumber's tape, instant solution, problem solved. If you were going metal on metal, you would have done that anyways. Number 11, the inline, the water that's going in, don't pull on it. I know you wouldn't think about that, but if you had a garden hose and it's pulling it down because of the weight of the hose or your sink's over here and you're stretching it, don't do it. What's gonna happen, it's gonna pull on it and it's gonna slowly start dripping and leaking. Not a big deal, it makes a mess. But if by sheer chance it pulls out, then you're gonna have a huge problem because then you're gonna end up with a boil over because you have no cold water going in and you just looked away for a minute. I know, it's how it happens. I actually have a fix for that for me. If you're brewing right by your sink and you're, boom, you're attached, you're set. And for that attachment, this is what I use. I use quick disconnect so I can screw that in. I have this on the sink and yeah, quick disconnect. They come in different threads and yes, I'll put some links below, but it doesn't matter what kind you have. You have inside and outside threads. And then for the female connection, you have inside and outside threads. And you can even get crazy and let's say this has this on it the female, and your sink has a female for some reason, you can buy the inside and outside and make an adapter. Yes, I actually did that and I used it and I bought it just for that purpose, <laughs> beyond the ones I already owned. But I bought this, this is 6.35 outside diameter and I believe it's around four and a half inside, I don't know for fact. I bought this Duotite, it's 6.35 outside diameter, inside diameter is only three millimeter but you know what? It's fine, I got enough pressure going through it. I'm getting about the same misting, I'm not worried, but I have longer hose so I can run it all the way over to my sink without having to be brewing right next to my sink. It's just gonna make my life a lot easier. It's cheap, it works, it solves the problem. Now, going into number 12, another hose I bought, a longer hose, is your drain hose, okay? This drain hose has to be going downward. It can be doing this, it can be doing this, it can be doing just about anything. It can't do this. It can't go back up or have any slant going back up. It has to be going down all the way. If it does go up a tiny, tiny bit, you're probably gonna be fine, but it's gonna create a little bit of back pressure. If it goes up a lot, it's gonna create a lot of back pressure and you're gonna have problems. So what I did to solve that problem, I bought more hose. So now I have a longer hose that I connect to this beyond this is the one that came with it and I connect it and I run it all the way down to my floor drain. I'm lucky I have a floor drain. If you're in your kitchen, you can put this right hopefully over the edge of your sink if you're brewing next to your sink. But yeah, I have a longer hose. And no, I'm not bragging. I really did buy a longer hose. So <laughs> I had to go there, sorry. It just seemed like an opportunity. But it makes my life easier. I don't have to watch the kettles overfilling. I don't need to worry about kettles. I'm going into the floor drain. Who cares? Let it go. Number 13. I know this is one and I have number 13 and 14 together. They're both about brewing odor. Okay. But I've done a lot of tests with this thing and I'm going to tell you right now, at least in a 470 square foot room. So my room is very enclosed. It's not like a whole house, an open floor mat, floor mat, floor mat. Yeah. It's not one of those. It's just 470 square foot space with no openings unless I open a window. When I'm brewing with the steam condenser, the odor is gone usually by the next day. And that's no windows open, that's air conditioning on. I do have a dehumidifier I run from time to time. I don't always have it in here, but with the dehumidifier, usually the next day the odor is literally gone. My wife, she's got the nose of a bloodhound. She might smell something a little bit, but it's, like I said, it's gone for me, almost gone for her. Now, without the steam condenser, you're talking three to four days and the first two days are intense. The whole room smells like I'm still brewing. It is incredibly intense in this small space. So I'm gonna say your mileage may vary, but it'll probably do better than mine. And so without the steam condenser, three to four days. Now, if I open all the windows, run the dehumidifier, two to three days. So the steam condenser, 24 hours, and I'm hunky-dory again. So yeah, I like it a lot for that main reason. Number 15, don't forget to clean it. I'm not gonna say you have to clean this thing every brew. I think I've cleaned it now about every third brew, but cleaning this thing about every third brew, yeah, 
That's it, and it's not bad. The main area I get a little bit of stuff in is right through here. That's it, inside. Everything over here, it's fine. I did clean the little misting piece off. It looked like it had maybe a hint of calcium buildup on it from just the minerals coming through the water. But, and I do see that being a problem down the road. I don't know how long it'll take. It'll probably take well over a year or two, maybe longer, and I might be able to clean it by soaking it in vinegar. Um, just to break up that calcium. So it's something to be aware of if you have a high mineral content in your water. I do when it's not running through the filters. Number 16, I know a lot of you have this concern. Okay, reduce spoil off, you're gonna use a little less water, but you're probably gonna go through about six gallons per hour, plus or minus, based on how much pressure you got going through this thing. And that's excess water that you really just need to dump out if you really, really, really wanna conserve, you can go water your grass, your plants, or whatever else. Or like I said previously, you can take a shower in it or a bath in it and smell like beer. Just don't put it back in your brew because it's gonna have DMS. 17, yes, 17, this is the most important one. Considerably reduces moisture in the air, which helps to reduce the chance for mold. Yeah, I'm in a 470 square foot room, like I said, and my number one concern is mold. I live in Florida. We get mold without even thinking about it. I mean, you hear about black mold and nobody even wants to touch a house with black mold. They're like, oh man, just rip it down or burn it down. Yeah, mold is very bad. And because I live in Florida and it's right now probably 80% humidity outside and it's the middle of the night, but during July it'll be 90 and in August it's almost always around 100% humidity. It's insane. It feels like it's thick and nasty in the house or in a garage or something like this, we run our ACs whenever we can, not to make it cold, to cool down a little bit, but to reduce the moisture in the air. And I have a dehumidifier, not everybody has those, but it's so thick. The last thing I need is mold, and this thing will help reduce the chance of mold. If you're doing this inside your house, like in a kitchen, yeah, this would be a necessity for me um, for two reasons. It would keep my wife from killing me from the odor. And number two, it would also keep her from killing me because of mold breaking out in the house because even if it wasn't my fault, it would be my fault. Yeah, <laughs> you've heard that one before. So yeah, this thing reduces the chance of mold in your house if you're brewing indoors. Yeah, I would say it's kind of a necessity unless you're gonna open a window and have a big old fan sucking all that moisture out, whether it's freezing outside or the middle of summer, you need to get that steam and that moisture out of the house. That's why when you go into a kitchen and they have that big old fan system, it's to help suck all that moisture out when you're boiling pasta or some other thing you're boiling. It's to get that moisture out of the house so you don't end up with mold in your house, okay? Hopefully that helps some of, some of you out there. Hopefully some of that information is incredibly useful. If you don't have a steam condenser and you were considering one, now you have more information to help you decide on what you need or don't need. Or maybe you're like, you know what? I need to brew outside. Yeah, it's your call. I love brewing inside ever since that's become possible. But hey, don't forget. Yeah, you know, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, keep sharing. Definitely appreciate it, but yeah. Anvil steam condenser, I like it. I like it a lot. I wish Anvil would come out with either an adapter or a different lid for some of their, uh, you know, other systems. So I could put a steam condenser on top of this too. Hint, hint. Thank you again and cheers. Thank you for joining us here at Bitter Reality Brewing.